My name is Dr. Paul Richardson and I'm the Director of Clinical Research at the Jerome Lipper Multiple Myeloma Center at, uh, uh, in Boston, Massachusetts, and I serve as the R.J. Corman Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School. It's my pleasure to be here at the 2019 ASCO meeting in Chicago, and it's uh, been my privilege to present two abstracts on behalf of my co-investigators. Um, the first one I want to talk to you about um, is a very interesting and novel approach um, to looking at uh, outcome data in pentarefractory, relapsed refractory myeloma patients uh, who have become what we call triple class refractory uh, and have been penta exposed. That means they've received um, cofilzomib, they've received bortezomib, they've received pomalidomide, they've received lenalidomide, and they've received uh, a CD38 targeting antibody, typically daratumumab. Now, for these patients and in whom they've had all this exposure to prior therapy and they've become relapsed and refractory, uh, we know that the outcomes for such folks are, are very poor. So as a result of that, this has been an area of intensive study for investigators in the relapsed refractory space. And one of the most interestingly and, and, and exciting recent agents in, in, in the relapsed refractory space has been Selenexor. And in the context of the STORM-2 trial, uh, where uh, approximately 130 patients were, 122 patients to be precise, were enrolled, um, we were able to see a response rate of around 30% uh, in this group from Selenexor and dexamethasone as a single agent, despite the fact that these patients were so heavily pretreated and so refractory. Obviously, in this uh, area, it's very difficult to do randomized prospective comparisons because there's a lack of equipoise for salvage therapy. So an alternative way of approaching this is to use a contemporaneous hysteric, historical control. And so this effort is designed to understand better in this group of patients how, if you don't receive, for example, a combination like Selenex or Index, such a similar uh, uh, patient population uh, would, 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 how would, how would their outcome be? Now, what we therefore did was to use what's called the Flatiron database, which is based upon a national network of electronic uh, uh, medical records, and to do so in a rigorous uh, fashion, and so generate a historical control group that's contemporaneous, but also uh, valid and robust. In doing this, what we did was to identify a subgroup of patients in this database who met the criteria for uh, being triple class refractory and penta exposed, and then to match those to the comparable patients in the STORM2 database and look at their outcome. The exciting news is that for the uh, selenexor and dexamethasone treated patients, we saw an encouraging survival signal in favor of selenexor and dexamethasone. Um, and in that context, it was therefore particularly important to better understand um, the performance of the flat iron database patients. And there we saw a very poor survival. And this did achieve statistical significance with a p-value of 0 0.02 uh, in favor of the uh, patients treated with Selenex or dexamethasone. Why, of course, this is so important is that it suggests, on the one hand, that patients with penta-exposed triple-class refractory disease in the absence of effective therapy have uh, a very poor outlook. But most importantly, it helps us then look at novel agents that may help patients in this setting do better and, and do so in a way in which we can uh, be more confident that the responses and benefit we're seeing is, is truly valid. So this has certainly been helpful uh, as we further evaluate the role of selenexor and dexamethasone uh, in this exquisitely uh, sick and vulnerable population.